This week, down at the barns, Les puts his parts on the table. This is my yellow ball. Uh, apparently this is what it's called in the industry. And demonstrates the new gadgets and gizmos. I've, I can simulate here different inputs on air dials. And the new inner wings are revealed. That was a massive difference. Mm. This is my yellow board. Uh, apparently this is what it's called in the industry. Um, I'm not absolutely sure why, so if you do know, just write it in the comments at the bottom. And this is fundamentally the Triumph Stag laid out on a board from an electrical point of view. And in a moment we can walk around and have a look at the major components that are here and how they'll stay the same and perhaps how they're going to change and what the additional systems are that we're going to put into the car. So this is an architecture drawing that I've put together and shows the major components that are going to sit on the CAN bus system that's going to run around the vehicle. And as we get into this a little bit later, you'll, you'll see why this becomes necessary um, because this is very much a resto mod. So the car is going to be modernized as it's uh, restored. Um, but all of this stuff that you see here will be hidden away. So normally this would be the, or is, the, the relay board out of the Triumph Stag. So clearly being an older car, it was just some electrics with relays along here. There's a lot of additional systems that are going to go into the vehicle and this wouldn't cope with everything that's there. So this is the new equivalent version of this. Uh, this is uh, a CAN bus based system, so this is the network that runs around a modern vehicle and this little unit here provides around 30 relays but all electronically protected and electronically controlled just with a two wire network and as we go on further you'll see how that connects up to the screen, connects up to the AVAS system uh, as you've seen in the, the original architecture diagram. This is the original heating and ventilation unit from the Triumph Stag. And this is quite a rare object because this one here has got, is a factory fitted air conditioned system. And we want to try and retain that because of its rarity um, in, in the sort of stag population. You can see here where the air conditioning um, used to go in. So this has two matrices in them. Uh, one is for the cooling. And then there is a second coming in off the water pipes here, which will be for the heating. The heating one, I don't have any hot water from an engine, so I need to replace that with an electrical heater as an absolute minimum so we can demist the windscreen. And so we're going to remove that heat exchanger in there and replace it with an electric one so that we can blow air up onto the screen. And then the heated seats. Uh, should be able to give quite a bit of warmth uh, without trying to heat the whole space which would be really wasteful on energy. And clearly there's a number of additional systems that are going to go into the car. And so to cope with that and keep the thing as original as possible we're going to implement a, a 7 inch touch screen display that's going to be put into the uh, sun visor and fitted into there and then reclad with, with leather and a screen over the top. So this screen here, we can actually move all the dials, we can see the battery levels and we can have a number of pages on here, as you would get in a modern car, just hidden out of the way. So moving on from the screen, uh, over this side over here, then we've got the AVAS system. Uh, I won't show you what's in the box right now, it's still in development, uh, but that is the sound system that will exactly replicate the noise of the Triumph Stag as it was originally. Um, in fact, it is the sound of this car. Um, it, it's not a simulated sound, it really is um, 
the rear and the front of the car and the sound that it made originally. This is the original dashboard and uh, the instrument cluster uh, that was in the car. And of course for an electric vehicle we're going to have to repurpose some of these. Um, the, the motor in the electric vehicle can go up to 20,000 RPM. Clearly not something that the engine was able to do. So we will scale this differently. The fuel, the fuel will actually be the state of charge of the battery, so fully charged, half charged battery. We do have some water in the motor and the inverter, and so for this gauge here, we'll actually monitor that temperature. Again, it's completely different to what was in an engine, but we'll just rescale that. And then we have a low voltage system so we can reuse the voltmeter we've got here. There's various lights around here with indicators, of course, they'll all remain the same. Some of the oil and choke, and I don't really know what we're going to do yet, but as we move through this, I'm sure we'll find uses for them. So what you've seen here is the, the low voltage electrical systems. This part here is the filler cap. It's actually a scrap filler cap um, off there. And this is really Nick's part. So Nick needs to get the charging plug inside of, of this, which is a bit of a challenge because it just had a, a filler hole in it. So we've got to remove the back of this casting uh, enough to be able to get that plug in there and then this hinges hinges down to close it off so the outside of the car would look no different uh, to what it would as a normal internal combustion engine vehicle so there's a summary of, of what's going on on this board um, so I think we better shoot off now um, get over to see Jason at Classic and Sports Cars see how the uh, body's getting on I've, I've, I've just left the wings on for now, um, A for you to see, and I wanted to make sure because I had to knock them about a bit to get them to fit, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I've had to cut part of this away and it's got to be, some of it's got to be replaced because there's rust in there. Oh uh, God. In the floor. Oh yeah. So uh, We thought the floors were good as well, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. the floors are good, up yeah. against a lot of them. If you want to see dodgy floors, look at that. Healing. <laughs> <laughs> but um, what I'll do, I, I have to support it under the various places and then um, I'll take the seals off. And that keeps the body where absolutely it, where you where want it to be. be. Yeah. Otherwise, if, if like say for instance you didn't support it, where, when, when it's on the road it's supported obviously by four tyres isn't it? Yeah. So wherever the suspension is, is what's holding the car because imagine that overhang. That's yeah, that's right. Yeah. Overhang. Well, yeah. if you imagine putting a big lever on this, yeah. you'd open up this door gap, wouldn't you? Yeah. That was a trouble, like with the Porsches and things like that. Right. Um, so what you do, you support it where, when it goes back on its suspension, where it would sit and where it would push the car. In the meantime, when you start cutting the bottom of these pillar things out and that that bit could tilt and that so you have to support it as you go yeah so my next job is to put it back in the booth in a couple of days time and i'll cut the seals off and do all them we'll stop that moving there it is a massive difference isn't it we get all of this yeah properly you never get it, you know what I mean? No, no. And it's not even in, it's just red oxide where it come out. That, that, oh, okay, this, is, this, this was the only protection, was it, on it? Yeah, yeah. Right. And other, uh, uh, places around the front, there's nothing. So, yeah. that's why it's like it is. So. Yeah. And you say they're nice panels, the, these ones inside? Yeah, that, that, they're made really beautiful. They just didn't fit, you know, the, the, they have to be at the right distance for for the wing to lip over yeah and it's too short here so i had to extend it um, and it was the wrong angle down there so i had to cut and shut down there just making me sound like i've been working on it 
<laughs> yeah. I just keep thinking, oh my God, the money. <laughs> That's all for now. Please subscribe to our channel in the link below. And if you have a classic car you'd like to convert or a classic car you'd like to feature in one of our future episodes, please get in touch. We'd love to hear from you. <laughs>